Hello. Our story begins on the march into the Jedi Temple. Anakin Skywalker was now the Sith Apprentice to Darth Sidious, and he was aiding the rise of this new empire. Anakin's task was simple. Go to the Jedi Temple and kill every single Jedi present. They were all enemies to the Republic. Skywalker's division followed him in through the front entrance to the temple, and they caught the Jedi off guard. Sinjalik, the battle master, and his students were right near the entrance when the clones marched in. Skywalker blindsided Sinjalik and engaged him. With very little time to react, Anakin cut down Sinjalik and his two students before pushing forward. The clones split up and charged through the temple as blaster fire littered the hallway. Anakin knew there was one more important target to worry about. It was Master Shakti. She was the only other council member that was of any concern to him. Skywalker marched across the Great Hall of the Jedi Temple as clones singled out Jedi and killed them. The troopers were brilliant hunters. They targeted the Jedi and spread out around them, splitting in the pairs of three and four, surrounding their targets and hunting them like prey. Lord Vader moved away from the clones, who were now making their way up the stairs to spread out throughout the temple. Anakin marched into Shakti's room and ignited his lightsaber into her back, an action that killed the Jedi Master instantaneously. As Anakin looked at her dead body, he realized something. A moment in time passed through his mind, and he realized that there was something missing. Palpatine told him that they could save Padme, but they'd have to do it together so that they could discover the secrets to eternal life. Before he walked back out into the Great Hall of the Temple, he realized that Sidious didn't know anything either. He wasn't telling the truth about everything, and he realized that this was perhaps his biggest mistake. If Palpatine was lying, then was there really a way to save Padme from death? Anakin didn't feel immediate regret. His focus was on saving Padme. He contacted Appa, who was currently moving through the halls and leading attacks on rooms full of scared younglings. Skywalker requested Appa and his best men to the Jedi Archives. Appa moved out, advising remaining troopers to finish the job. The clone commander ran down the hall with a bundle of the most elite men he could find as he was trailed into the Archives. Anakin made his way there, breaking through the doors and searching for Jocasta Nu. Inside the room, he could see temple guards fighting amongst themselves, but Anakin didn't care. Skywalker could see Appa when he leapt up towards his position where he informed Apo that there was an archivist here. She needed to be captured. From behind him, he heard her voice, telling him that he didn't have the option. Skywalker turned his head back and spoke from his side, telling Apo to set weapons for stun. Jocasta readied her lightsaber and moved in. The temple guards were still at work, trying to break free, but with the archives open, they started pouring into the temple to save the other Jedi in the Order. The future Grand Inquisitor was pinned up, fending off a trio of their best warriors. Anakin didn't know, and he didn't care. He engaged Jocasta. She wasn't the duelist she once was, but she was fighting for their order. She was going to stop whatever carnage was to ensue with Anakin leading this assault. Skywalker backpedaled, allowing her to get comfortable before finding her weak spots. As an archivist and former council member, she hadn't seen much action for a good 30 years. Jocasta parried and struck, using what she could to keep the clones away from her. But Anakin jabbed his blade forward, locking hers in place before spinning around and lobbing Jocasta's lightsaber from her hands, and then turning with the force and reaching out, gripping her to keep her in place until a few stun rounds dropped her. Anakin told Apo to get a gunship ready. He was going to escort her away from the temple. Commander Apo got onto it, and Vader moved to the front of the structure, cutting down the very few unlucky Jedi who got in his way. When he got to the steps, he ran into Apo and his men again, who were holding Jocasta limp in their arms. The reason they split up is so Anakin could cover their escape, which he did effectively. Appa prepared to turn back and run in, but Skywalker stopped him, telling him to join him inside the LA-18. Appa listened and pressed a button on his wrist, delegating one of the many clones to lead the army. Skywalker told the pilot where to go, and the vessel departed into the skyline of Coruscant. Jocasta was still not awake yet, and she wouldn't be, but the clones held her in their arms as they passed by the Jedi Temple. Explosion sounded off and the sky filled with smoke. Vader turned the other direction and waited. When they arrived, he told the clones to wait for a moment, as he leapt off the ship and ran into the residence of Senator Amidala. He knew it wouldn't be right to hide his safety from her, so he quickly ran into the residence, before she could see the clone gunship and its members. He told her about the Jedi attack on Palpatine, and how they were being dealt with. Anakin then told her that he'd be ending this war and protecting her from what was to come. Padme was appreciative, because there was no way that he would ever lie to her and so he departed. The gunship was given the correct coordinates and the vessel departed across the skyline, then the barren straits, and then into the lower levels. When Jocasta Nu woke up, she was surrounded by five clones, one being Commander Apo. Anakin was standing at the edge of the scorched room. He was looking into the distance, presumably thinking about something. Apo called General Skywalker and informed him that she was awake. 
Vader was lost in thought, considering how he would handle the situation. Despite believing that he was going to be aided by Sidious, he considered the prospect of killing him and undoing the rise of the Empire. It'd be a galaxy without the Jedi and without the Sith, something that in his own mind felt perfect, balanced without the interjection of ancient religions. Skywalker thought about it. If Mace could defeat Sidious, then surely he'd have no problem doing the same thing. He smiled to himself at the thought of being responsible for the deaths of two of the most powerful warriors in the galaxy. Anakin walked over to Jocasta Nu and she looked at him with a puzzled face of confusion. Not anger, not sadness, just curiosity. The look was demeaning. It was like she was above him in every way. He didn't appreciate her look of superiority, so he asked her if she knew where this was. She didn't. Anakin told her it was the warehouse where Ahsoka was when she was found, betrayed by Berezafi and the Jedi Order. Jocasta looked at him, wondering how that was her fault, but to Anakin, this was the place where he felt the most resentment to the Jedi Order. He continued by asking her if she could reveal the nature of the Force to him. She snickered, asking if Anakin Skywalker was really asking to learn something. The mocking tone wasn't appreciated, but he ignored it, even though it really irked him. Anakin looked down at her and asked her if she knew how to save people from death the Force. She looked at him and asked if he really thought that she knew that. Anakin turned and informed her that Sidious spoke of an ancient Sith, one named Darth Plagueis the Wise. He was an individual who found how to save people from death. She laughed a little, enough to get him to turn around, and he asked what was so funny, and she told him that Plagueis wasn't ancient. Any Jedi in the Order could have told him that. Skywalker's face shone that of confusion and Jocasta twisted her shoulders, did her arms being restrained behind her back, and told him that Sidious likely lied or told him about his own master, the one that he probably killed. Anakin thought for a moment, not realizing that Plagueis could have been so recent. He then told her that Palpatine claimed there were ways to save people from death, and he wanted to know if she was aware of any of those ways. He was willing to do anything to get these answers. Jocasta told him that the Force was such a wondrous thing, it gifted them the ability to do many things, but save people from death was an unheard of mystery. Anakin looked to her and asked how the Sith could discover its secrets before the Jedi. Jocasta's tone dropped, and she told Anakin that the Sith didn't discover anything, and so she asked him, what did the Sith do? Anakin said they won. She rolled her eyes, telling Anakin that they lied. They fed off of pain. If they gained something, someone else suffered. The Jedi already suffered for the individual that Anakin wanted to save. Did that save that person's life? Anakin was unsure. He didn't believe so. He was supposed to learn the secrets, or at least discover them with Palpatine. His argument was falling apart inside of his head, and Jocasta could see it. Anakin tried to bluff her, but she wasn't falling for it. As an archivist, it was her job to defend the knowledge of the Jedi Order. It was her responsibility to maintain the secrets of the archives. Anakin tried to find a way to convince her to reveal the truth but she just continued to avoid it. Jocasta was honestly dragging this out longer than it needed to be. She saw that Anakin was desperate, and he wouldn't be able to get into the archives and find the information he needed if he killed her. Either she had secrets, which Anakin believed she did, or she could tell him where to find the information, which she was not going to do. There was, in his mind, no way that the Jedi didn't know the path to immortality. They were just too humble to actually use it, but Anakin could use it for righteousness. Jocasta asked Anakin what more he was willing to sacrifice for this individual. He told her everything. The Jedi Archivist just nodded her head. Skywalker was willing to sacrifice his own life for this individual? How truly ironic it was that Anakin could not see that. But that was the brilliance of the Sith. They convinced someone to destroy himself so that he could receive the unattainable. The Sith would never be able to save others from death. The immortality came from within. If Anakin wanted to save someone, he'd have to lose something himself. Because through the path of the Sith, he would be destroyed. As a Jedi, it was possible, but she had no intent of telling. Firstly, it was her duty to protect the secrets of the Archives. Secondly, Anakin attacked the temple on behalf of the Sith. And thirdly, she had no issue dying in this petty back and forth. She knew Anakin's patience would run out eventually. Either he'd lose his patience or he'd kill her. It didn't matter what happens first. She could wait. Inside the Jedi Temple, the Jedi were making their resurgence. The clones were getting beaten back because of the Temple Guards. It ironically was entirely due to Anakin's realization of Palpatine's deception. Anakin broke into the archives where all the Temple Guards were. This gave them a chance to escape and leave a small group to deal with their traitor. Without Anakin or Apo, the main group of clones were pushed back by a rallying of Jedi Masters and Knights, 
a rally that wouldn't have been accomplished had Anakin remained inside the temple. With so many younglings displaced by the siege of the temple, the knights and masters were able to focus on the fight itself. This was also greatly aided by the strength of the temple guard unit, which had since come back from being borderline useless. This counter made by the Jedi completely blindsided the clones, and they were forced to make a fighting retreat. The clone in charge of the temple operation, which was seen as a success when Anakin left, contacted the Chancellor, informing him that they were in a dire need for reinforcements. As the clones fell back, Sidious sat in his chair watching the useless specimens from Kamino foil his plan. From the hologram, he could see the clones dying, and of course, he could see the clone who contacted him and told him he needed reinforcements. Sidious asked where Lord Vader was, and the trooper informed him that Oppo and Lord Vader were following a direct order made by the Chancellor. Palpatine wasn't aware of any such orders. The trooper needed a directive, and Palpatine told them to fight till either they won or there were no more of them. Reinforcements would be on their way. This was a bit jarring for the trooper. Anakin would have never given that order to them. Something Krell may have done, but not Skywalker. The trooper was kicked into the wall once the communication ended as a wave of temple guards started ripping through the clones, pushing them to the edge of the temple. Sidious contacted his new apprentice. Anakin and Jocasta knew were still bickering. Nothing was getting done, and then Skywalker stopped, looking down at his communication device. She asked if it was his new master, and Anakin's glare looked from his hand to Jocasta Noon. They didn't break contact as the communication continued to beep. Then, it ended. Jocasta looked on with disgust, asking if Anakin really had faith that his new master would gift him the secrets to save a life. Skywalker grabbed his lightsaber and ignited it, shoving it towards her throat, telling her that her bickering wouldn't be able to save her from him. He could take a life just as easily. Jocasta didn't budge as her eyes moved to the troopers. Anakin was so focused on his rage that he didn't register the next individual called would be Apo. Anakin looked over and saw Apo respond to Palpatine. He was a clone. He was supposed to follow Palpatine's orders. Anakin's eyes were locked on Apo as he started to respond, and Anakin raised his hand. Apo started choking, and the other four clones turned their attention to him. Anakin drove his lightsaber forward and crushed the communication inside of Apo's helmet. The other clones raised their weapons and Anakin defended himself quickly, cutting each of the respective clones down and turning back to Jocasta. She asked Anakin if the person he was trying to save would willingly condone this, or was that individual an agent of the Sith too? Skywalker stopped. He was upset. He just wanted to save Padme's life, that's all he wanted. He hoped that by kidnapping Jocasta, he could avoid having to find out by trusting someone who didn't know the true secrets. Now everything was out of hand. He sat between mental breakdown and full-blown rage. He turned to Jocasta, and she, still without moving, asked him if this is how he was hoping it would go. Anakin turned back with force and demanded that she stop. She shrugged her shoulders, telling him that she could stop, or he could learn a lesson. His eyes said everything he wanted to say, but she didn't care. What would he do? Kill her? So what? She lived her life. She defended the archives. What came was only natural. Jocasta just pressed further. She told Anakin that even if there was information inside the archives, he threw away any chance of actually retrieving it. He looked at her, wanting to know what that meant, and she explained. She told Anakin that Mace Windu had every intention to promote him to the rank of Master when he returned. So much so, that she was informed before they even arrived at Palpatine's office. Everything he ever wanted was moments from his grasp. If he only learned to let go, he could have had the chance to find the answers he was seeking. Anakin stopped her and asked what she meant, and she explained it once more. Even going as far to say that Obi-Wan told her a number of times that Anakin wanted to be a Jedi Master. Windu was in favor of this promotion because he had faith that Anakin would be a great Jedi Master. Windu's only issue with Anakin was his trust. Skywalker looked down and realized how wrong he had been, but what could he do? He couldn't undo his actions. They weren't technically illegal, but they were morally wrong. Anakin asked her what to do, and Jocasta quietly sat there, telling him that these were his actions. It was his decision if he wanted to undo it or not. She couldn't give him the secret she had, and she certainly wouldn't allude to knowing anything after what he had done today. Many of the Jedi killed were her friends, her family, those she cared about. Anakin had to make his decisions from here. Inside the temple, the Jedi were finally getting the push finalized. The clones were in full retreat, and those who were getting close to the steps of the temple were thrown down them. The Jedi weren't seeking revenge, but they were doing everything in their power to defend their home. The survivors started working on fixing their predicament. The clones did a number. 
but there were about 1,500 survivors of the original 4,500 inside the temple when Order 66 started. 1,300 of these survivors were younglings, a number the Jedi killed when they had their little resurgence. And now, the 200 or so adults had to rally together their forces for an evacuation. As they did that, 50 temple guards moved to secure the entry and exit points. As masters and knights rallied together what wounded they could to defend if another attack came. At the front, 10 Jedi stood at bay, watching over the front of the temple, and they watched a Republic shuttle land in front of them. One of the Jedi started to open a frequency to contact his brothers and sisters within the temple, but before they could, their neck snapped and they dropped to the ground. The other Jedi looked at the dead body, believing that there was something behind them, but the doors to the shuttle opened and a hooded figure walked out. The lead Jedi told one of their allies to run, inform everyone and get them out of here. As they started to run, they were stuck in place. Sidious ignited his lightsaber and stepped forward. The other Jedi turned their blades on and rushed the Sith. Palpatine smiled from under his robes as he moved his lightsaber with ferocity and precision. He slashed at the Jedi, and similar to how he did with the Jedi Council inside of his office, he dispatched these foolish lightbringers. They all tried to fight back, each of them swinging at Sidious at the same time, but his speed was unlike anything they'd ever seen. Every time they countered him, he was already another step ahead of them. The individual who was trying to run away was still stuck in place, and all they could do was listen. As the lightsabers got closer and closer, and the sound of their friends dying washed over his ears. It was like dominoes. The sound of thudding when each last one of them fell to the ground. He tried to run forward, but he couldn't, until the crimson blade of the Sith Lord was shoved through his back, and he dropped to the ground lifelessly. If the clones invader couldn't finish this, then Sidious would accomplish what every Sith for the last several thousand years dreamt of, ripping every Jedi inside the temple limb from limb. It would only be a matter of time until it was complete. Below the city, Anakin pressed his hands to his head, telling Jocasta that he messed up. She told him that only the strong persevere through their hardest struggles. Skywalker had so much going on through his mind. Initially, he thought he could learn to save Padme from death and be on his way, but things were so much more complicated. What did Palpatine want from him? As he stood there, the pilot from the LAAT ran towards him informing him that the temple had been recaptured by the Jedi. The pilot then looked down at the dead bodies and then back to Skywalker. He started to back up and Anakin told the pilot that they betrayed him, something about being a Jedi even though he was interrogating the archivist. The pilot looked to Jocasta who wore nothing but a blank expression. Anakin asked the pilot if he could take them back to the temple. He nodded with a yes sir not believing that Anakin would ever willingly hurt his troops unless provoked to do so. Skywalker looked back to Jocasta, telling her that maybe she couldn't ever forgive him, and perhaps it was okay, but he needed to know if she would help him right his wrongs. Jocasta brought her arms around. She'd broken free from her shackles hours before, but she knew she would never get to the temple without aid. She was waiting for Anakin to either come back from his rage or find a way to escape. All of her stoicism was just in hopes that Anakin wouldn't go through with killing her. The two moved to the LAAT and lifted off, still without her saying a word. Anakin gripped the handlebars on the interior and thought about his actions. If Jocasta was telling the truth about Mace Windu, then there was something that he was clearly missing about himself. Why couldn't he see it? The reason Anakin wanted to return to the temple was so he could breach the archives with the clones. He was truthfully hoping the double-cross Jocasta lead a group of clones back into the temple and get to the archives. He wasn't going to kill her, but he was going to use the clones to burst into the archives. After that, he would defend the temple because the people in the Order didn't deserve to be killed, at least the younglings, priests, and instructors. He realized how wrong it was to march on the temple and kill the very few Jedi that he did, but at the same time he had a moment of realization. Despite his own flaws, he realized how much of a victim he was one manipulated by Palpatine and brought down to the level of the Sith. As he stood there watching the buildings buzz by inside the clone gunship, he felt tears roll down his cheeks. He loved Padme with his entire heart. He couldn't let anything happen to her, and in an effort to save her, he gave power to the most corrupt person in the galaxy. He could have waited. He could have gone to her. He could have stood with a Jedi, but he didn't. In hindsight, his actions didn't make a lot of sense, and his rage at that moment may have seemed honorable, or rightly placed, but now he realized it no longer was. As they came up over the surface of the planet, the sun was rising. The fires burning in the temple were filling the skyline, and Anakin looked at what his actions caused. The pilot informed him that the shuttle was landing in front of the temple, and Anakin looked to Jocasta. As she told him, it was time he see what he helped create. Her face was worn and full of sadness, but the ship landed and Anakin walked out. As he did, he walked past a number of dead Jedi littering the entrance of the temple. He then heard the sound of lightsabers clashing. 
Anakin ran in, looking for it, and when he turned the corner in the Great Hall, he saw Darsidious. His blade was sticking into a Jedi's chest, and he was on his knees before the Sith Lord, before being kicked off the blade. Sidious turned to his apprentice with a grin. He asked Lord Vader if he came back to serve his Emperor. Anakin ignited his lightsaber with a scowl, telling him that he came here to rip him limb from limb. As Anakin was finishing the sentence, lightning fled from Sidious' fingers, and Skywalker was launched from his feet, and thrown into the ground. He winced in pain as Sidious told Skywalker that he was foolish for believing that he could betray him. There was still so much to do, and he was too foolish to see it. The Empire would grow, with or without him. So Sidious gave him a choice, be a part of the growth, or be a part of the past. Anakin looked at the Jedi and the clones around him, and pulled his lightsaber back into his hands. He told Sidious that he would die. Palpatine told Anakin it was a pity. He would have made a fine Sith apprentice, but if he wanted to die as a Jedi, then he would. Anakin shook his head and told Palpatine that he wouldn't die. He'd make right of a terrible mistake, but not as a Jedi. Sidious launched at Anakin, and he defended, moving his lightsaber to his legs before above his chest. Sidious was moving with purpose and power. He made sure that Anakin was on edge the entire time. Skywalker stepped back, trying to defend himself before the two of them locked blaze, and Anakin used his strength to push Sidious backwards. It worked until Sidious spun away, letting Anakin's momentum to push him down, and Sidious slashed the outside of Anakin's knee and watched him drop. The Dark Lord towered over him and told him to stand and fight on his own, to stand up for himself. Skywalker held his leg and rose to his feet, looking over to Sidious, stepping up and spinning his lightsaber in his hands before thrusting forward. Sidious backed into a power stance before delivering a powerful three-point saber combo to knock Anakin off his balance. Skywalker tripped over a body and stood up grabbing a clone blaster and turning around and shooting. It clipped Sidious in the shoulder because he didn't expect it. He called Anakin pathetic, and Skywalker shrugged with a rigid grin, one that said he could take on the entire universe because that's what he was here to do. Skywalker and Sidious re-engaged. Their blades slammed together and Sidious fell backwards, trying to hold Anakin down. But Skywalker had no interest in giving up this fight. He drove his lightsaber forward and Sidious grabbed his metallic wrist, driving his blade down and removing it before blasting Anakin with electricity and throwing him across the Great Hall. Anakin tumbled across the ground and landed. His head turned over and he looked into the expressionless gaze of a dead youngling. All he saw was himself. He failed himself. He failed the order. It was a moment of serenity, like he realized all that he once was and all that he could have become. Anakin took a deep breath and a tear slipped from his eye as he used the stub of his metallic wrist to push himself off the ground. Anakin looked at Sidious who ran towards him. Skywalker looked up, holding his leg with the stub of his wrist as he pulled a lightsaber from the dead temple guard and ignited it before Sidious could strike him down. Anakin drove the blade forward and it slid into Sidious's chest, but there was an issue. The Dark Lord's blade made contact. It pierced Anakin's abdomen, a strike that similar in fashion to how Qui-Gon died would lead to his death. Had it been right or left, he'd survive, but not here. Anakin held the blade there for a moment before Sidious fell lifelessly in front of him, and Anakin fell onto his left hand, which held him off the ground. From behind him, he heard footsteps. It was Jocasta Noon. Anakin fell over and rolled before she got there. He looked up into the towering halls of the temple, and he could feel his life flickering away from him. He told Jocasta that he was sorry. He held his stomach with his hand and leaned up with his stub, telling Jocasta with all of his strength that he needed her to protect Padme. Let him die, but please, do anything to make sure she didn't die like his mother did. Jocasta got down on her knees next to him, still without saying a word. She then spoke up. She saw the best and the worst of Anakin Skywalker tonight. She saw the Sith that could have become Darth Vader, and she saw the man who he should have been when he went to the executive building. Jocasta looked down at him. He was about to transcend into the living force, and so she gently leaned her hand out from her torso, and she placed it down on the wound and closed her eyes. The force transferred from her body into his. When it was done, Anakin asked why she did that. Jocasta looked away, telling him that as a Jedi it was her mandate. As a person, she couldn't forgive him, but she could learn to understand. She suggested that he and the Senator go far from Coruscant, that they take all their struggles and personal problems with the system and give themselves a clean slate. She then told him that the Order would suffer, but they would recover. They all would. She looked away, wiping a tear from her eye and walking away. She didn't want to do that but she hoped that her actions would be enough to tell Anakin that by abstaining to the light, he would save those he actually cared about. Luckily, after causing so much carnage, she hoped that he would see the light. 
As a Jedi, while it might seem counterproductive, it was their way. Jocasta walked far from Anakin, not wanting to be near or around him. She had the pieces of the Fallen Order to pick up. There was a weird bond created between Jocasta and Anakin during this encounter. She had no respect for him, and even though she didn't hate him, she never wanted to see him again. She did wish the best for him, but that was because she didn't want him to ever come around their temple. It was a sanctuary, one that he was no longer welcome to. Anakin didn't break any crimes aside from killing Oppo and the other four clones, but they'd likely be lost to time as the truth was exposed to the Senate and the galaxy. Anakin would deal with the Separatists on Mustafar before returning to Padme and taking her away from Coruscant so that they could enjoy being away from the drama that would soon consume the galaxy. Anakin would confess his actions, but considering he was responsible for ten or so deaths, it was semi-forgivable. She had issue with it, but these weren't youngling deaths, only adults. Padme wanted Anakin to get psychiatric help on that boom, which he'd agreed to, and the two of them would have their happily ever after on that boom. Jar Jar would take over Padme's seat and assist in the Republic operations in the post-Order 66 era. The Jedi would be devastated, and Yoda would discreetly remove his order from Coruscant back to Python, a place that they once called home. The actions of Order 66 would be seen as jarring, confusing, and uncalled for. Yoda and Jocasta would stand before the Republic after getting clearance so that they wouldn't be killed by clone troopers so they could explain themselves. And they would, telling the nature of everything that happened from their perspective. The events would naturally be seen as a tragedy, and what would remain a mystery is how it all unfolded. The sad reality is, the Jedi would take the blame for it, because Palpatine's security footage was changed by Palpatine to favor himself over the Jedi. The Senate would give the Jedi time to leave, but they were to not engage in public relations for the foreseeable future. This did include mercy missions within the Republic. This would be a hard loss for the Jedi, but they'd find a way to overcome these difficulties. Yoda and Obi-Wan would learn the truth regarding Anakin, and they'd be greatly disappointed, but they would not seek revenge. The entire situation had a terrible aura around it, and while the Jedi were built, Anakin forged his own new family, one with Ahsoka and Rex as members of it. The Republic would stand, and Anakin would get his help. The Jedi would move into the Outer Rim, being that it was not Republic territory, and they would do what they should have been doing for generations, but the galaxy would be forever changed by the effects of Order 66. And that, my friends, is our story. Again, special thanks to our patrons, Benjamin Wells, Jenga Fett Clone, Nick5098, INTJ Recluse, Ben Ingram, The Big Red Pure Mark, Diamond Constant, Darth Nemesis, Lord Tib, CC2024, Galvin Gaming, Tristan Mandalore, Sir William1767, Darth Revan, Grandity Bane, Laliant Sky Guy, Penguin, Cullen Rooney, Shark Midori, RJ38, Nick, Michael Erlanger, The Last Jedi, Apollo, Wii 670 Annika Shank Runner, CT7567, Toaster Oven, Oz of Oz, Darth Knox, The Eternal Padawan, Joshua Tem, Johnny DeGuin, Santa Skeleton, Jedi Sloth, Mr. Yeet Gamer, Lord Kallig, Yanli 66 Mammoth Studios, Anakin 003, Lord Draken, Forda's Legacy Star Wars, Airbus, Rex the Wolf, Main Three First Names, Dark Saint 46, Baron Joshua, and Lord Deadwing. For supporting the channel, smash that like button, support me otherwise, check out the Patreon. Otherwise, let's talk about this story. It's kinda dark, kinda happy. I wanted it to feel like that. I didn't want this to be like a joyful story, I didn't want it to be a bad ending, kind of a neutral ending, if anything. The idea of Anakin kidnapping Jocasta Nu was always really interesting to me. If anything, I'd feel like a really stagnant moment. I don't think Anakin could kill her because he would feel that she would have answers that she was hiding. I kind of wanted it to be kind of like Joker and Batman from the Dark Knight. Obviously, there's nothing being given as a result, but it's like this back and forth between these two characters that are having like an intimate conversation, but it's not going anywhere per se. Like, Jocasta has all the information Anakin wants, and she's not going to directly give Anakin what it is that he desires. And I think the end of that is kind of where that comes from, is that it all builds up to Jocasta deciding in the last moment to save Anakin's life instead of letting him die. Because she does know the secrets, but she doesn't want to give them. The ending is more of her hoping that her actions are the lesson, not her words, because she knows that he doesn't listen to those. So anyways, I hope you all enjoyed that. I love you all, spread the love, and always remember my friends, May the force be with you.